Hey everyone! So we have um, some really cool updates from the last two weeks. So I know in my last update I mentioned that we were told to be ready because Caden's cord flow had been um, getting like more and more elevated. So it's like 96 and 98 and then greater than 99%. So they said like the next couple weeks when you come in just be ready if it stays um, like if it turns to absent flow we'll keep you um, and you'll have to deliver. So the last couple weeks, last two weeks, last two Wednesdays, um, have definitely been an emotional roller coaster for me just because every time we've left the house, like we had to make sure we were fully packed up, had dog, dog care, like prepped and figured out. Um, and then just like, because there's so much unknown about, um, like how long of a NICU stay it's going to be and stuff like every time I left the house emotionally, it was just like, I don't know when I'm coming back. Like maybe it's later today. Maybe it's in a couple days. Maybe it's in a couple weeks. Maybe it's in a couple months. Like I just, I don't know. Um, but thankfully, thank you for all the prayers. Um, God's been good. His cord flow has remained at that like greater than 99% the last two weeks as well. So it's been three weeks now. Um, of the cord flow being like greater than 99% but maintained forward flow. So it hasn't like crossed that line yet into the absent flow, um, which is what would have uh, made us stay and deliver. And then he's been doing great on his NSTs and BPPs, which is awesome. So we didn't have to deliver at 35 weeks or 36 weeks, which was um, Technically today, Thursday, I'm 36 weeks, but yesterday, like one day shy of it when we were in Vermont um, yesterday for our appointment. Um, and then, um, so yesterday we had an NST, an ultrasound, and then an appointment with an OB. So the NST, it was actually a really quick day of appointments. They were really like on top of things, but the NST... Um, went really well, um, he passed it fine, so that's two points towards the BPP, and the ultrasound was supposed to be a growth scan with the BPP and the Dopplers to check his, um, cord flow, but because the last two growth scans, he's actually been within, like, normal range. The first one, he was, like, growth restricted at 8%, but then the last two, he's been fine, um, they wanted to switch it from like three weeks to four weeks. So they wanted to push the growth scan back a week to next week. Um, so they decided not to actually do the growth scan yesterday, but they still did the BPP and the um, checking his Dopplers. And th that was the like, fastest he's passed the BPP, um, did all the things really quickly. And then they checked the Dopplers. Um, and his umbilical cord was still greater than 99%, like I mentioned. And then they also checked, like, the brain thing. Um, and that one has been, like, the last couple of weeks on and off, like, 1%, 2%, 1%, whatever. Um, and anything less than 5% is abnormal. So both of his Dopplers are still abnormal. So then we met with the OB. Um, and this OB, they have you, like, switch OBs pretty much every time just so that when you go to deliver, hopefully, like, you've interacted with each of the possible OBs there. Um, and this one was actually the guy who did our amniocentesis like way back when we were first getting diagnosed, uh, getting Caden's diagnosis. Um, so it was cool to like get to talk to him again in person. Um, but that one, um, it was nice to be able to talk to an OB in person because my last OB appointment was two weeks ago and that was a phone call. And then two weeks prior to that is when I met with somebody in person there. So it's been like almost a month since I've talked to somebody and I had heard like a couple different things from people. And so, but I hadn't like been able to follow up with anybody on those things. Um, so it was really good to get to talk to somebody in person and, um, he confirmed, which is what I thought I had heard like a month ago, that if his cord flow numbers stayed elevated, um, we were looking at like a 37-week induction, where if his cord flow numbers happened to like 
go back into normal range, like they would push me to 38, but they would only do 38 if cord flow looked good, 37 if it wasn't looking great. Um, so he did confirm that like cord flow has been elevated consistently. Um, so we're going to do a 37 week induction, which is next Thursday. So a week from today is 37 weeks, which is when he is trying to get it scheduled for. Um, more on that later, but so that was confirmed. My glucose levels every single time I get like a higher number, I'm like a mental disaster. Like I've broken down a couple times when I get high numbers. It's not very often it happens, but like every once in a while. Um, and it was great yesterday. He's like, yeah, these numbers are beautiful. Like you should have no problem. Like once you deliver, they should go back to normal. It's very unlikely that like these numbers will affect his blood sugar at all, but we'll definitely still check it. But like your numbers look awesome. And so that was also just reassuring because I've been so stressed about it. Um, and um, he also commented on um, Caden's growth and how he like isn't quite sure how Caden's so big despite having like um, the the cord flow issues because normally the cord flow issues are connected with um, growth restriction, um, which is why during that first growth scan when he was measuring small, um, they checked his cord flow and then found the cord flow issues. But then since then he's been growing a ton, but he's um, his cord flow hasn't been good. And so he was just commenting on how like maybe he was meant to be like a 99th percentile baby, but um, because of the cord flow, he's only like at the 50 something percentile or something. So I don't know, it was just funny to hear him. Not quite sure how Caden's so big. I think it's partly just due to everybody's prayers and praying for a healthy baby boy. Um, so yeah, induction. So we still have, this is the week where my appointments change from Wednesdays to Tuesdays. So next Tuesday, um, we'll go back in for another NST, BPP, and OB appointment. Um, so there always is a slight chance that if at that appointment they do his Dopplers and it's absent flow, it'll be switched to like we're staying next Tuesday to induce. So there, we still have one more day of that like uncertainty going in not knowing if we're going to be told to stay or not. Um, but if we go home Tuesday, our induction is set for Thursday. The way that they do inductions at that hospital, though, is that um, the morning of, you'll get a call being like, hey, like, time to come in today. Or you won't if the hospital is, like, too busy with other patients. Um, so it could be Thursday. It could be Friday could be Saturday. He said like 85 to 90 percent of the time it's the day that it's scheduled but it could be pushed back so induction set for Thursday. We'll see what happens um, and then yeah we'll see. Um, I'm really praying that my body starts to prepare itself um, this week so that the induction is not as hard. Um, we also talked about how a baby's ability to tolerate contractions is linked to how well the placenta is working and the cord flow issues that I've been having um, already show that like my placenta isn't working as great as it should be. And so, and because this is my first kid and labor is usually longer with a first child, um, there's a much greater chance that um, at some point throughout labor, Caden will, like, won't be able to tolerate the contractions and we'll have to do a C-section. So there is a much higher chance of a C-section just due to like all the circumstances. Um, so I'm really praying that my body starts to prepare itself. Labor is shorter um, than it would need to be and that we won't need to do a C-section. But even if we do, like however he needs to get here safely, um, we'll be good with. But... Yeah, so that's just prayers for this week. His body starts to prep itself. It'd be great, though, be said, even if he could come on his own this week so we don't even have to do an induction. Not super likely because it's my first kid, but you never know. Um, and, yeah, and then just prayers, continued prayers for um, 
a short NICU stay and just him being as healthy as possible, being able to breathe on his own, being able to to eat and latch and swallow his food fine. And um, yeah, just that he's healthy and that the NICU stay isn't super long. So that's our update. Um, it's getting real. We have like a date now, even like with a potential of him coming earlier, but like we know when the end date is, which is crazy. Um, and we're really excited to meet him. So yeah, thank you guys so much for all the prayers. It's, it's meant a lot and um, Caden's been able to stay in longer than I think the doctors were thinking, um, which is really cool. So thanks and the next update might be after we have Caden, we'll see.